Welcome back everyone, Mariah Monetize here. And in today's video, we're gonna be getting into the price of Bitcoin, going over the recent move in the price. And then I'm also gonna be going over where I'm gonna be bumping up my stop loss order to um, after I had entered that position last week at $16,830. Gonna be also going over some news in the crypto space as well. So let's first just go over some news here when it comes to Bitcoin, the economy, uh, and everything like that. So with the current price, when Bitcoin, it's just below it, was at $17,455. The um, fear and greed index uh, was sitting at 26. Really interesting. I think we got around three, four, and five when Bitcoin hit its previous lows. Um, this is some really great perspective. WeWork used to be valued at $47 billion in the private market. It is under $1 billion today. Not all growth stories pan out. Uh, the CPI expectations are now at 6.5%. It was at 6.6% earlier in the week. Um, let's see here. What is today? Wednesday. So uh, CPI numbers are coming out soon. If not this week, they're going to be coming out next week. Um, let's go ahead and see here. And we also peaked at 9.1%. This is not related at all to things I make content about, but I think this is just something really nice to focus on in the middle of the week here. How beautiful would it be if we said to people we loved, I'm not feeling like my best self today. Can you remind me of who I am? And that person said a few reasons why they appreciate you for you. Appreciation and connection heal us. Like, what a great perspective. What a great thing that you can add to your life that would be so impactful to the people around you. Tesla is up 20% from its low last week and Meta is up 50% since November. Wow. I don't really pay attention to meta stock much. Um, so just kind of some examples of, even though we're focusing on a lot of markets, they don't have a lot of volume, there's still plenty of opportunity out there. Just in, Binance CEO says the exchange aims to hire 1,200, 1200 to 2,400 people or employees in 2023. You know, we've kind of reached a point in time where I don't believe anything that exchanges have to say and even, it's, even if it's an exchange that really hasn't done anything, um, when exchanges say that they have funds one-to-one -one of what customers are holding, I don't believe that. And especially when it comes to Binance, there is so much speculation around um, CZ, the, you know, the CEO of Binance, and how shady he potentially is. And so I personally don't believe anything coming out when it comes to Binance. Breaking, Binance wins seventh approval in Europe, registers with Swedish regulator. Uh, Justin, FTX has recovered over $5 billion in cash and cryptocurrencies, and that is reported by their attorney. Once again, I'm not going to lie. That's something that I actually don't believe. Would that be good news? Yes. Does that really match up to like everything that we've seen so far? Not quite. Don't forget, we did have that report that came out that basically said the government in the Bahamas seized like three point something billion from FTX. But once again, um, it's really hard to believe. And it's unfortunate that even if those funds are there, like just to give you guys, you know, an example, when it comes to BitConnect, which was a Ponzi scheme that basically fell in, I believe, the end of 2017, maybe early 2018, right in that time period, when BitConnect, okay, BitConnect failed, right? Um, there was nothing really about them filing for bankruptcy, but currently one of the creators, his name is Greg, uh, the court hearing, I think starts like January 12th or something. I just got an email about it and that has been what five years since, and no funds have been recovered or returned. I wouldn't say recovered. No funds have been returned since BitConnect. So that just kind of gives you an idea of how long this can take. If you have your funds tied up with a company that has filed for bankruptcy, it could be a while. Just in, Binance gains court approval to acquire bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital. They got approval, but doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go through. Breaking, Gemini terminates its crypto yield product. So we know there's a bunch of drama going on with Genesis because basically the reason why, if you're using Gemini, and I didn't actually understand this because I did use Gemini earned product. And what I was doing was basically if I was not trading funds, I would put them in Gemini earn in GUSD, and I think I was getting at one point up to 8%. But then I realized there was a point in time where I tried to basically 
move out of earn and take those funds and put them onto the trading platform, it was going to be up to a seven day delay. This was a while ago. This was probably like honestly close to a year ago at this point. And so after I had that experience, then it wasn't as appealing because I didn't like that my funds were locked up for that extra period of time, which then could cost me a lot of money in the long term. And then the 8% APY wasn't necessarily even worth it. So we know that the reason why is because basically that yield was actually coming from Genesis. Uh, the average 30 year fixed mortgage rate is 6.21%. That's up from the 3.64% average rate seen one year ago. Just in Coinbase fires 950 employees. Uh, since October, Twitter has laid off 75% of employees. Um, Apple is in a hiring freeze. Amazon has laid off 17,000 employees. Goldman Sachs has laid off 8% of employees. Meta laid off 13% of employees. Coin, Coinbase laid off 20% and Intel laid off 20% as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the situation there. Um, FTX spent about $7 million on food in the first nine months of 2022. That's about $26,000 a day. Um, I actually don't really think that is all that much money, to be honest with you. If you consider how big FTX was and how many employees they technically should have had to be able to manage a platform that had that many users. So just to kind of give you like a behind the scenes and story that I think story that I think is really important. So being here in Puerto Rico, I had my opportunities of being exposed to certain cryptocurrencies, uh, companies that, you know, were basically um, building on the blockchain had basically ICOs, initial coin offerings made, you know, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I saw it for myself. These were companies that raised, you know, tens of millions of dollars in an ICO. And they were just blowing that money out of control, okay, on parties, on wages, basically acting as a company as if they had already made it and they didn't even have a functioning product, okay? And they weren't even close to having a functioning product. And the founders were living life as if they had already made it using the money raised from the ICOs. And once I saw that kind of behavior, I knew that those companies were never going to make it. And then it just made me absolutely cringe to see them go out and try to raise money from private investors. And if I were those private investors and I knew the behind the scenes um, of what was really happening and how they were so financially irresponsible, I mean, so many of these companies don't even have chief financial officers. It is um, really a complete joke, but they put on this front like they're legit. Everyone's wanting to throw money at the startups in the um, blockchain space. And so that is was something very interesting that I learned. And it just kind of gave me a reminder of the importance of the behind the scenes and the due diligence when going in on this. And I would just, just think to myself, I really hope that this private investor does not go through because I would never in my life give um, money to this company. Okay. Just an FTX spends 40 million on hotels, flights, and food in 2022. That's what the court filings say. Um, okay. So here are some key events for this week. This is actually posted, uh, on Monday. So it's a little bit behind here. So banks begin reporting Q4 2022 earnings. Fed chair Powell speaks on Tuesday. So that was yesterday. I'm not really sure what he said. I haven't even looked into that yet. Um, Let's see, December CPI is released on Thursday. So tomorrow that's gonna be interesting. We typically know that CPI, Bitcoin doesn't really do, in most cases, all that great around CPI announcements, which we get on a monthly basis. So we get December numbers to uh, tomorrow. Um, we get consumer sentiment data on Friday as well. So just some information there. I don't know if I mentioned this in my previous video, but the DOJ officially sees over 456 million dollars worth of Robinhood shares tied to FTX founder SBF. Interesting. So yeah, um, honestly, when it comes to like the billions of dollars that FTX was supposed to have, you know, this 7 million on food and 15 million on luxury hotels in nine months is like not surprising to me. And honestly, I really wouldn't be surprised if it was even more than that. Okay, so let's go to take a look here on the price of Bitcoin. 
I haven't looked in a couple days. I'm looking at it with fresh eyes with you so I can kind of figure out where I want to bump up my stop loss to on my current position of 1.5 Bitcoin. This is a weekly chart. Looks pretty good, honestly. We have a green two trading above a green one. That's nice. Um, we have cleared this uh, 50 DMA and we uh, are actually getting pretty close here when it comes to this green moving average. I mean, not close, crossing over the red, but it is headed in that direction. We have seen a bit of a, of a momentum shift here. Bitcoin currently sitting at $17,342. This is a daily chart, which looks a little bit on the extended side. I would, bit of, I would anticipate a bit of a pullback to this range over here, uh, 1740. So honestly, I would probably keep my stop loss at about 17,000 at this point, but that could change in a moment's notice. Um, do I think Bitcoin has more room to take off before pulling back? I would say maybe like 17,800, 17,900, probably find uh, some resistance here at this 100 DMA and then possibly a pullback after that. This is a 12 hour chart right here, which also looks like it's going to be cooling off a bit. This right here is a four hour looking nice with an upward trend. We want to see Bitcoin hold the low of this candle right here, which is $17,136. Let's take a look here at the hourly. Ah, interesting. Hourly doesn't look too hot. We have made a lower low. We made a lower high over here as well. So um, hourly chart looking very weak on Bitcoin. This is a 30 minute chart also looking weak as well. Let's take a look here at the five minute. Okay, so lower level time frames not looking all that great. Um, honestly, probably wouldn't be a terrible idea for me to jump out of Bitcoin and then maybe put in a buy order at about 17,136 at this swing low over here. So that might be something that I consider to do. So we have Ethereum sitting at 1323. Um, let's see, we have gold sitting at 1870, BNB sitting at 276, Coinbase stock. Wow, has made quite an improvement up to 4165. So what else do we have here? We have DOT sitting at 483, LINK sitting at 603, um, Celsius coin sitting at 66 cents. I don't even know if that's still being traded. I don't know if this is even active. Let's see if this is even active. Uh, November, no. So this was FTX, okay. So I don't even know if Celsius coin is still trading, but obviously this was an FTX chart, so that can be deleted because FTX has been deleted. Okay, um, let's see, what else do we have here? We have XRP sitting at uh, 36 cents. So let's go ahead and take a look over at traditional markets. SPY at 391, obviously it's really important that we also take a look at SPY because of the correlation that we typically see. Um, so I would say that SPY on the seven day chart actually looks weaker than Bitcoin. Let's take a look here at the daily. Daily looks um, weak on SPY as well. So SPY actually looks a bit weaker than Bitcoin at the moment. Let's take a quick look at marijuana stocks. Green across the board, wow, very pretty. Just like green rolling hills over with the uh, marijuana stocks. Let's take a look here at Tesla sitting at 122, a nice recovery off that bottom. Very, very nice. So that's kind of what I'm seeing there when it comes to the, um, the charts. So I um, am doing calls once again. And so a 30 minute call is $45. I have a link down below if you want to ask me anything about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, moving to Puerto Rico, life in Puerto Rico. Um, anything that I've talked about on this channel, you're more than welcome to ask me about. So that is an option as well. And before I get going, don't forget, if you want to buy Bitcoin now and not pay taxes from all the gains that you receive um, until you turn 59 and a half, you can withdraw starting at 59 and a half and not pay any taxes on that gain, then getting a Roth IRA is definitely a smart idea. Check out iTrust Capital. You can not just buy Bitcoin, you can also buy other cryptocurrencies as well as precious metals. And you can actually trade within your Roth IRA account. It is a non-taxable event and trading fees are just 1%. So if you want to, um, one of the most challenging parts about trading no one ever really talks about is the factor of paying taxes anytime you sell an asset. And um, so that is really awesome there. So that's all that I have for you today. As always, go out there and create a portfolio that you love.